Good morning, everyone. This is Joyce, the voice of Joyce. I'm recording uh, in my home, just like I guess everyone else is, and zooming around, as I call it, so I can keep busy and up to date with family and friends. And I'm going to be doing something totally different uh, next week. I'm co-hosting a TED Circle with my friend Leah from Alabama. And I do hope that a lot of you will join us. Uh, we can take at least 12 people from anywhere in the world. All I need is your email. So if you will write to the voice of Joyce at earthlink.net, uh, give me your email. We're going to be on next Thursday, April 30th at 11 o'clock in the morning for about an hour. And our topic is, what would you like our world to be like? after we exit COVID-19. And we will exit it. Make no mistake. There's no question in my mind. The only question is, how soon? And the how soon depends on government. We can see right now that not having a federally central government is not appropriate when we have a major emergency that is a global emergency and affecting millions of people. It's already caused the deaths of 50,000 in America. More deaths than we are used to calculating for a seasonal uh, disease. And this is not seasonal. We have no good idea about how corona will spread during the summer months. It certainly spread in Australia during the summer. And we don't know what it takes to actually contain this virus except quarantine. We wouldn't all have to be quarantined if we had massive testing. The UK is embarking on a massive testing program. According to the Gates Foundation, we could be doing massive testing from home we could be using reagent strips, just like they do for people who have diabetes or when they want to check your, uh, your urine pH. Uh, we can be doing those swabs at home. No need to go out to do it. But again, we need national provisions so that this can happen and that every lab is mobilized at once and has the reagents and the test kits. It's absolutely imperative. We're working on plasma vaccines as we speak. Around the world, 100 labs are working cooperatively. In America, we've already started uh, vaccines using antibodies in Seattle, Washington uh, with the Moderna Corporation. This week, I understand the Hasidic community from Brooklyn has gone to Maryland to donate their plasma. As everyone knows, their communities have been decimated by the virus. This is a virus that does not see wealth, but it certainly sees poverty. Any place where people have to be 
in close proximity to each other, the virus thrives. And it's very difficult to maintain social distancing. That's why our supply chains may be disrupted. If they are disrupted, there's no reason we cannot get logistical volunteers and our army involved in helping bring the food to the communities and the people in need. 50 million people are slated to be food insecure in America. 26 million people are now out of work. We need to be providing monies for them. It's too bad that government did not take my qualitative easing for Americans seriously. We could have probably eschewed all of these schemes where big businesses had absolutely zero conscience. They were publicly traded corporations and they went after the small business loan money and got it. So now we have another loan program that's being signed off as I'm speaking. It's sad that so little is going to Americans. Americans who do not have enough money to put aside for three months or longer, who need money and food desperately. I don't hear Trump or the GOP actually thinking about how are we going to resolve our logistical problems and get food on everyone's table. I don't see a plowing under produce or stopping production of meat and poultry or any product when people are going hungry all over our country. What's important is testing. What's important is a vaccine. And this will take some time. It may be that we'll have results in September. And then it will be a priority of the states who's tested, who's vaccinated first. But until that happens, many of us will remain in quarantine. And it shows that we need government, responsible government to help us. As Teddy Roosevelt would have said, he believed in equality neutral. That is not happening in our country. Clearly, those corporations and ultra wealthy people have been the ones entitled to government largesse, while the rest of us in the states are being taken care of by our own states, not so much the federal government. I don't understand why anyone should be surprised that money went to those who don't need it. From as far back as I can remember and have read, the banks have been breaking the laws for years and having the Federal Reserve change the laws on their behalf. Somebody said to me that gross domestic product has gone down well, most of us who work for a living, we have not seen the great expansion. Never before was the banking industry 10% almost of the gross domestic product. Clearly, they're not counting us. And so we're suffering and we're losing out 
on what was the great expansion. But I think you should join me in the TED Circle and let's come up with what do we think we'd like to see when everyone can go back to work, whether it's on staggered hours or not, or whatever that job may be, because once we're well paid, the American public will spend. We've always done so. However, the lessons that we're learning today, that will become part of our DNA, just like the Great Depression lasted for many, many generations. Nobody wasted in the 40s. We had a war and we had grandparents who remembered the Great Depression. And I even found my ration card as a baby. Wasn't used, but it was there. So better times really will be coming. And I know that communities are becoming more cohesive during these times. And that's a good thing because what's really important is that we take care of ourselves and we survive so that when this ends, we can go out and be happy once again. Meanwhile, like one of my friends said, I'm happy that I can get along with myself on a day-to-day -day basis. You might scold yourself once in a while, but it beats the alternative. Find things to do. Get dressed in the morning. Look at the day and say, thank God I'm alive. So have a blessed day, everyone. Wish I could have been more upbeat. However, I'm thinking about what in my larder am I going to do for lunch? And as everyone says, the days are days now, and we should be filling them with the ability to care for our kids and to make sure that we have food on the table. And if you don't, please make it known to your local police department, your school district, your community centers, your churches, or whoever, so that we can have a massive volunteer army, making sure that the food pantries and communities all over America are well stocked with food. I know that this is a big ask not to be uh, too upset about the economy and how it's affecting us. But I believe that in the end, there will be a global reset. May not be with Trump, but there will be a global reset because we are all suffering equally and we're all locking down our countries so that more people can survive. Don't think this is something that's going away. It isn't. It is coming back unless we change the way we, we live. And that means understanding that climate and pollution has played a big role in determining the virus's uh, spread. And many more viruses will be coming our way if we don't stop the carbon excess that we've created. By the way, 
The fossil fuel industry has been in decline for a while. They unfortunately bought into their own propaganda. They had 15 years before the coronavirus struck. Now they will indeed have to keep assets in the ground because there's nowhere to offload them. So don't worry, somehow or other, all of this will work out and we will be embracing each other again. Not for another year, perhaps, but when we do, it will have so much more meaning for all of us. Have a blessed day, everyone, and I'll see you next week. You can bet on it. Take care, and don't forget, email me about the TED Circle and joining my Zoom uh, call and be, have your voices heard about what you'd like to see in the near future. Or far, doesn't matter. Uh, email the voice of Joyce at earthlink.net. Take care and once again and have a blessed day. Bye now.